This is the Fujifilm X-H2 versus the Panasonic S5. So this is the video y'all been waiting for. This is the Panasonic S5 Mark II versus the Fujifilm X-H2. 40 megapixels versus 24 megapixels. 8K versus 6K open gate. Full frame versus not full frame. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, I am Tung, and today we're going to do a comparison video between the two camera. We are talking about the Fujifilm X-H2 and the Panasonic S5 II. But why don't we stop the dilly-dallying and get right into it? Starting with what people want to know first, and that is the image quality. The Panasonic S5 II is a full frame 24 megapixel sensor that seems to be dated in today's time. With all the cameras with the high megapixel uh, counts out there like the 33 megapixels, the 40s, the 60s, even 100 megapixels out there. Even smartphones nowadays can shoot 100 megapixels. I'm actually okay with the 24 megapixel sensor. I actually think it's a lot better than the high res because it actually saves on storage costs. People don't realize when you buy into a high res sensor, you're also going to need to buy storage for it. And you're gonna find it to be costly to have all that data saved up on your hard drive. And I always appreciate a full frame sensor. I love the photos I've been getting out of this. I love the photos that I've been getting out of the S5 II. The skin tones look great. I heard great things about the Panasonic's color science for a while now. Everybody who owns a Panasonic is always raving about their color science. The Fujifilm X-H2 has 40 megapixel. It has an APS-C X-Trans sensor inside. It has the beautiful Fuji colors that people love. The, the Fuji users go crazy for it. It has all those film simulations to choose from, which I think makes Fujifilm stand out from the rest of the crowd. Thumbs up if you like film simulations. The 40 megapixel sensor produces a great image where you can crop in and still come out with an image full of detail. This is great for people that like to shoot wide. Uh, you can mess around with different crops, different aspect ratios, and get an entire different image from that one image. The colors that this sensor produces is stunning in my opinion. It's rich, the skin tones look great, and I'm letting you all know right now that color is subjective. So take this information with a grain of salt or don't. But I prefer the Fuji colors over the Panasonic's. I said it, I said it. I'm always telling people to get into Fujifilm because you're going to get a taste of those film simulations and be hooked. The straight out of camera JPEGs on Fuji cameras are the best in the world. I don't think other cameras can touch this. The Fujifilm X-H2 has around 13 stops of dynamic range and the Panasonic S5 II has around 12. In real world cases, I haven't seen much of a difference. The Fujifilm X-H2 can shoot 15 frames per second mechanical shutter, which is insane in my opinion. It and it can shoot up to a 20 frames per second with an electronic shutter, but it comes with a crop. Or you can shoot at 13 frames per second electronic shutter and it'll shoot it without a crop. The S5 II can shoot an underwhelming seven frames per second with autofocusing continuous or nine frames per second with single point AF. I'm okay with the seven frames per second anyways. I think seven frames per second is plenty for portraits. However, the S5 can shoot 30 frames per second with electronic shutter. I would like to add that both of these cameras do not have a stacked sensor. So using the electronic shutter could be limited as it could produce those jelly warping effects. So just be mindful of fast movements and whippings in your photos. The buffer on both these cameras are great. The Fujifilm X-H2 does clear a bit faster because of the CF Express Type B. I've been using this Pergear one terabyte card for some time now and it's been a solid pickup for me. It's taken all of my 40 megapixel images and it has recorded all my 8K footage without any hiccups. Uh, the transfer speed is also quick as well so I am really really happy with this card. The S5 Mark II uses SD cards and they are great if you use fast ones so make sure to pick up some V90 SD cards if you can. That's the one you're going to need if you're going to be recording 4k videos. I've been using Prograde Digital V90 cards for a while now and again zero issues. I don't get any weird formatting issues like I do with other brands. Let's move on to the video quality. The S5 does 6K open gate, which is clutch. I think more cameras are going to lean into uh, open gate soon. It's such a versatile filming option to have. Open gate allows you to film the entire width of the sensor. So that way you can do uh, different crops with it. You can crop in and reframe your video at a 16 by nine option, or you can use it to film in a vertical nine by 16 format. And since we are living in a TikTok, Instagram reels, and YouTube shorts era, 
this is a great feature to have because all you really need to do is just to film it once and have a couple of options to crop to different aspect ratios. Whereas before, I would hate that I have to film one vertical take and one horizontal take. That was always a drag to do. So the open gate is very handy. Although the X-H2 cannot film an open gate like the S5 Mark II, this camera can film up to 8K30, which is freaking insane. So if you're editing on a 4K timeline, you can punch in and still see details because of the 8K footage. It has many other options as well, such as 6.2K and as well as 4K HQ, regular 4K, and it can do 4K60 with a slight crop. Whereas the Panasonic S5 II can shoot 4K60, but with an APS-C crop, which is a 1.5 times crop. And that is a bummer. So if you're looking to shoot 4K60, make sure to bring some wider focal length to compensate for the crop factor. The video looks great as well. This is the first time using a Panasonic system. So I have like no baseline to work with uh, but to the eye test I think the video looks good all I know is that I love the video footage that I've been getting with this camera I think both camera does a good job at taking great photos and taking great videos so you can't go wrong with either options the Fujifilm X-H2 can record ProRes RAW and B-RAW with an external monitor such as the, the Atomos Ninja V and 10-bit 42 on, on all video resolutions such as 8K, 6.2K, 4K HQ and so on it can do ProRes internally whereas the Panasonic S5 can film the 6K open gate but on a 10-bit 420 codec 4K and 4K60 are at 10-bit 422 the S5 Mark II's maximum bit rate you can choose from is 200 megabits per second and the maximum you can choose on the X-H2 is 720 megabits per second. And with the Fujifilm X-H2, you can choose between a long GOP format or all, all intra format. Whereas the Panasonic S5 II only has long GOP recording. In the codecs and bit rates department, there are more to choose from with the Fujifilm X-H2. But to be honest with you, long GOP on the S5 II should be more than enough for most people. If you require better codecs, I suggest you wait for the Panasonic S5 II X whenever that comes out. The rolling shutter performance on the S5 II is better than the one on the X-H2. The X-H2 has some gnarly, jelly, warpy thing going on. Both cameras' IBIS systems are very good for photos. I say that the Fujifilm X-H2's IBIS for video does need a bit more work. The Panasonic S5 IBIS, however, is probably one of the best I've ever seen in the game. It's so smooth looking in my opinion. Whenever I do panning movements with the X-H2, I still get this feeling that the IBIS is fighting with me and it's being just a bit jerky. Whenever I used the S5 II to do any sort of panning, it was smooth like butter, man. I'm really happy with its IBIS, especially for hands like mine too. I don't have the, like the steadiest hands. And then whenever you guys see me vlog, it looks like it's going to give you an aneurysm. So the IBIS looks so much smoother on the S5 II than the X-H2. Just know that this only works well with longer focal lengths. If you use an ultra wide lens like the Sigma 16 to 18 millimeters, you're going to get some bad warps and wobbles because of it. But the Panasonic S5 has dual native ISO starting from ISO 640 and then the second one at ISO 4000 in VLOG thus making this camera a capable low light video camera. However saying that this X-H2 surprisingly wasn't that bad in low light as I thought given the fact that this is a 40 megapixel APS-C sensor I thought it would be terrible. I believe because of the backside illuminated sensor it also helps with the noise and such. Don't quote me on that I'm not a camera scientist. This was something that someone on the internet has left comment on one of my videos and I tend to believe everything they tell me because it's on the internet. The 8K on the Fujifilm X-H2 is awesome, but I find it's unnecessary. You're going to need an 8K monitor to view 8K footage. Most people are consuming content on their phones or on their small computer monitors and their laptops. So 8K, in my opinion, is just hype for now. 4K is more than plenty for today's age. The Fujifilm X-H2 has a digital zoom feature, which I like. When you film in 4K, the X-H2 will use its 8K sensors to digitally zoom in. This is great if you, for if you forgot a certain zoom lens, you can use digital zoom and zoom in without losing any details and resolution. The Panasonic S5 is made for video creators and filmmakers. Me, as of lately, I never considered myself to be a filmmaker, but I am doing more video stuff for myself in the content creation space. So I'm trying to uh, learn more on the video side of things. Right now, this, I think this camera is a bit too much video camera for me, but I do enjoy certain things from it. One feature that I really like is the frame marker. What this does is it gives you an outline of the frame. So let's say you want to edit a music video in a one by one square aspect ratio. You can turn it on and when you press record, you know what 
what's inside that frame. And I think that's a very handy tool to just keep everything inside that frame without having whenever you're recording so you don't have anything cut out. Whenever I film in 6K open gate, I would have the nine by 16 aspect ratio marker on. So it helps me align everything that I need to be within that outline. So whenever I go into post, I'm not missing any limbs. Everything looks exactly where it should be. Nothing will get cut off or nothing would look funny because of it. So I really like this feature you got here, Panasonic, and I wish this was implemented in other uh, camera brands. I'm looking at you, Fuji. Better do it, because otherwise, I'm switching to Sony. I'll do it, man. I'll do it. <laughs> There's also a 16 by nine, four by three, five by four. There's also a one by one, like I said earlier, a four by five and a nine by 16 frame marker for you guys. And then you also got the cinematic aspect ratio that I don't know how to say. So I'm just going to leave it on screen for you guys to read. It's right here. Pow, pow, pow. The S5 also has an anamorphic de-squeeze feature, which is clutch. The last time I de-squeezed the footage from a Fujifilm camera, I needed the help of my Atomos Ninja V. Now that takes some time to set up if you know. You have to grab the monitor, you have to grab the HDMI cables, you gotta grab the battery, you gotta gra grab the hard drive to set everything up just so just to plug it in the camera and then do squeeze it on the monitor but with an s5 ii this feature is already built into the camera which is freaking awesome <laughs> there's also ability to turn on your waveforms and your vector scope and then they also have the red record frame indicator as well you know when you press the record button there would be these red outlines around the lcd screen these features are not in the Fujifilm X-H2. I wish they were because these features are so handy. The S5 II also allows you to input your own creative LUTs to view when you're recording your footage. And this is also pretty clutch so you can see what your image would look like with your LUT on. And there are definitely more video feature set that makes this camera, the S5 II, a more capable video camera and it's more useful than the X-H2 but I haven't played with them all. Like I said, I think this may be too much camera for me at the moment when it comes to video, but I'm glad that I got it. I honestly bought this camera for photography in mind. <laughs> the video aspects of this camera is so freaking dope. I'm really, really enjoying it. Let's move on to the autofocus. The big update on the Panasonic S5 II is its autofocus. It's now a phase detect autofocus, which I find to be reliable. I don't believe it's better than the Sony's. I used to own the Sony a7 IV. I still think that AF is really, really sticky. And I find that the Panasonic is not far behind and I'm okay with that. When it comes to video autofocusing, the Panasonic S5 II is great. I have zero issues with it. It grabs my face very well. And whenever I need to showcase a product, it will grab, it will grab that as well. And once I'm done, I put it down, it switches back to me and um, there's none of that micro pulses that plague the Panasonic cameras of the past. I am really satisfied with how this autofocus has been for my needs. The S5 II also has face and eye detect and animal and human detect. I watched a few videos on the S5 II and then they said in order to have the best AF tracking for faces and bodies, leave it on human AF instead of face and eye AF because if you are far away, then the camera won't be able to de detect your face, but it will detect your body and it will track, it will continue to track your body when your face is too far away. For the Fujifilm X-H2, the AF for the photography has been amazing. It's not a 90% hit rate like the Sony's, but it's more than plenty for me and us Fuji users to be satisfied as well. I think both are great for photography and general use cases. I, I shoot portraits and the most I'll ever do is have a subject spin around or do a twirl or walk down a straight line. And I think both can get the job done in that regard. The Fujifilm X-H2's autofocus for video, however, could still use a bit of work. The Fujifilm X-H2 also has bird AF, IAF, plane AF, car autofocusing tracking. It could detect people on bikes as well, but what it doesn't have is object tracking. The Sony has it and it does it really, really well where you just have to touch the LCD screen and it knows to draw the box and lock focus on that box. And the Panasonic S5 II also has object tracking, but it's not as streamlined as the Sony, but it's better than nothing and I'm glad that it's there. 
So again, the autofocusing on the Fujifilm X-H2 for video still needs work. There are times where it doesn't respond the way I want. There are times where it gets too excited. And there are also times that it works really well. So it's not as consistent as I would like. I've talked about this in my Fujifilm X-H2 review. So if you want to hear more, you can click here after you finish this video. And it also depends on the lens that you get to to make it work. Depending on how old your Fuji lenses are is how quick they are able to focus. But if you have ample light around, both of these cameras autofocusing will work very well. And again, I think both are great for photography. I think tracking faces and eyes for portraits for both cameras are fine in my books. Uh, the video AF on the S5 II, I feel is better than the one on Fujifilm. The Fujifilm needs to give us more firmware updates to improve the video side of things. Let's move on to build quality. The Panasonic S5 II is nicely built. I think everything makes sense on how they laid things out. It's like they really thought this one through and it's also a good looking camera. You got the spam dial on top with the three custom settings, C1 to C3. What I like about the S5 II is it has a joystick and a scroll wheel making our lives so much easier when we need to scroll for things. I also find the joystick is not as sensitive as the X-H2. You got the single point AF, the continuous AF, and the manual toggle besides the joystick. And it's so easy to switch to different modes, which I do appreciate. Now with Fujifilm, if you wanna change from single point AF to continuous AF to manual focus, you have to press a few more buttons and then confirm with another button pressed. And that's already too many steps in my opinion. The buttons on the S5 II feels great. The buttons are rounded, giving it a nice tactile feedback when I press on it. Whereas the Fujifilm button feels sunken when, you, when you're pressing into it. Although you get used to it, but if you're coming from like something like an X-T3 and X-T4, you may not like this. That being said, I do prefer how the S5 II controls are laid out uh, more than the my Fujifilm X-H2. The Panasonic S5 II has a built-in cooling system inside that camera. For those long days of recording, this, will, this fan system will keep it cool. If you want the X-H2 cooling fan, you're going to need to shell out a few hundred bucks to get that accessory, and then that'll be attached to the back of your LCD screen. During my testing of the S5 II, I was recording 6K open gate footage for about an hour to an hour and a half, and I didn't get any uh, overheating warnings or anything like that. The grip on the S5 II feels great. This camera feels great to hold in the hands and the Fujifilm X-H2 as well. I like the look and feel for both cameras. The Fujifilm X-H2 also has a spam dial, but instead of three custom settings like you have in the S5 II, you get seven on the Fujifilm to store photos and video settings. If you want to have a good shooting experience with the X-H2, you must have those settings set. Both bodies are splash proof and dust proof, which is great for that peace of mind. The X-H2 also has a top display, but I honestly would rather them give me another dial instead of the top display thingy. Both of these cameras have a flip out LCD screen, which are both sharp and bright. The EVF on the X-H2 is brighter and sharper, and it's been a joy to use outside. I think the EVF has around somewhere around 5 million dots, whereas the S5 II has 3.6 million dots. I find the S5 II is more than enough for most cases, but I do prefer using the X-H2's EVF when it comes to shooting outside in the bright sunlight, making it much more easier to see when I'm composing a shot. Another reason why I prefer using the X-H2 outside during a day full of sunlight is because the X-H2 has this one feature that is really, really awesome. It can shoot up to uh, one over 180,000 of a second. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this has been pretty clutch for me because I've been shooting with lenses that are like around f1.2 and f0.95 and I am so grateful for that. Uh, the S5 II tops out at 1 over 8,000 of a shutter speed and when I'm shooting outside during the day I'm not able to shoot wide open to get that background blur, that tone. I will need to stop down because of this. I also like this red record button on the S5 II. The record button on the X-H2 is so tiny and it's so close to the ISO button. And I sometimes get them mixed up when I'm not looking because they're so close together. Fujifilm X-H2 has a dual card slot, one being a CF Express Type B with one SD card slot. The S5 Mark II has two SD card slots. The battery life on the X-H2 is a lot better than the S5 II. I feel as though I can get more out of the X-H2's batteries than the S5. One thing to note is whenever I'm filming my YouTube videos with the S5, it's hard to know which percentage I'm at because uh, the S5 doesn't show the battery percentage. So I'm left to guess when I should stop rolling to switch out my batteries. So small request, Panasonic, if you're listening, if you're listening to this Panasonic, please add a percentage onto the battery life so we can see it on screen. This will help out a lot. 
Both these cameras are priced the same, but they are for different users. With the Fujifilm X-H2, uh, that's more for the people that want a high resolution sensor, high res in photos and in videos. I would say that Fujifilm X-H2 is more for the hybrid shooters, whereas, whereas the Panasonic S5 II is a video centric camera that can take some good looking photos. And I know Fujifilm X-H2 has the better codecs and bit rates that should be more attractive for the video centric users, but the S5 II has a robust video feature set that I feel is better for video shooters. You got the 6K open gate, you got the waveforms, you got the vector scopes, you got the shutter angle, shutter angle. You also got real time LUTs where you can add in your own LUTs to monitor your videos. The Fujifilm X-H2 can't do that. <laughs> it can't do none of that and I wish it can. So Fujifilm, if you're, if you're listening, Please add all this in if you can. The Panasonic S5 has better IBIS for video panning and better video autofocusing as well. The S5 II menu system can be a bit overwhelming to navigate and the menu system on the X-H2 keeps things simple in my opinion. Another thing that I have to mention is Panasonic's lack of lens selections out there. When I entered this system, I didn't realize but there aren't many third party lenses out there for the L-mount. Fujifilm on the other hand has got Sigma lenses, Tamron, Viltrox and then they got the Chinese brands like the Seven Artisans the TT Artisans and the Lawa and more to choose from. So the Fujifilm X system is more fleshed out in that regard. Although I feel like they have a complete lens selection between the L mount Alliance for most of your needs, I still feel there's not many options and variety like what Fuji has. So if you're thinking of getting into the Lumix system, this is something you have to be mindful of. However, the S5 II is also a full frame camera. Let's not forget about that because a bigger sensor means that there's gonna be more depth of field. It generally means that it's better in low light. But having said that, I still think that X-H2 is still decent in low light. But I'm going to swing this back to you. What are your thoughts on the X-H2 and the Panasonic S5 II? What do you think is the better camera? If that should even be a question because I don't think you can go wrong with either camera. Just pick the one that you vibe with the most. Which one are you guys leaning towards to? And if you are interested in these cameras, links to them are down in the description. And if you find this video helpful, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. I talk about Fujifilm and I guess Panasonic content now on this channel. So if that's your vibe, Please subscribe. And as always, my name is Tung, and I'll see you in the next video. I love you.